All right, now we're going to get into something that's really interesting. It's called a denial of service attack. Properly used, it can be an invaluable tool. We really need to analyze the way that these things take place and get a good understanding of how different types of denial of service attacks occur. What we want to understand is what a denial of service is and understand that it's actually one of the most publicized ways that an attack takes place. An attack takes place. An attack takes place. An attack takes place. There's been several that are out there. So what we'll do is we'll go over what a denial of service attack is. We'll talk about the different types that are out there. There are some classifications of them. We'll talk about tools that facilitate a denial of service. We'll go over a few denial of service tools. We're going to take a look at bots and how these get implemented. That leads us into the idea of distributed denial of service, which is actually your large scale. When you talk about things where hackers get names made for themselves, that's definitely an area for it. The taxonomy of de distributed denial of service attacks. We'll take a look at the tools used in that. We'll talk about some worms. We'll look at reflected denial of service attacks. And then lastly, what the denial of uh, service attack countermeasures are that are available for you. Some real world examples of these are huge. There have been denial of service attacks. Slammer is a great one. There's been many times that the networks have been brought down simply due to an overflow. What a denial of service attack is is it's any way that we can basically, through flooding or through some sort of manipulation, make a system stop responding to legitimate users. Understand the frustration here. You're always going to be vulnerable to a denial of service attack because you always have to expose certain machines. 